Welcome to the first seminar series on diagnosis technologies and innovation. The first in our seminar series of the role of diagnosis in health and well-being. The social science perspective on the social, economic, and political costs and consequences of diagnosis. I don't usually write out an introduction, but I wanted to get the words right, so I'm, I'm doing that. Which, which is why I gave you a pretty picture. <laughs> Occupy you. The first of our seminars is dedicated to an examination of Examination of the ways in which technological innovation is intertwined with the fabric of contemporary Western medicine, and particularly our serious theme of detecting, diagnosing, treating, and preventing disease and disorder. From early technological innovations such as the stethoscope and scalpel to genetic tests or MRI scans, such technologies embody particular conceptions of what parameters define or ought to define a disease and influence ideas about what sort of remedial technology is appropriate and how disease categories are understood by patients, physicians, and public. I think I got most of the words in that one sentence. Technolo technological innovations are also shifting locations of diagnosis, for example, in e-health initiatives, blurring distinctions between health and disease through a focus on at-risk categories, and changing classifications of disease and how we engage with them. Our speakers will address these issues, and we hope that discussion will focus on implications of new health technologies and innovation processes for practices, experiences, and governance of diagnosis. Um, we are privileged to have the insight of our invited speakers, whom I will introduce momentarily. And I just want to say, I don't think we could put together a better panel for, or group of speakers for this particular uh, seminar. And we're grateful to the ESRC for funding our seminar series. We've been delighted at the enthusiastic response to the seminar, uh, which was, this one was significantly overbooked, and we're very grateful for the amount of attention we've, we have had. First, a quick background on the seminar series. The series is a consortium effort between scholars at the University of East Anglia, the University of York, the University of Exeter, the University of Cambridge, and Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. It arose from the, the foundational work done by professors Sarah Nettleton and Anne-Marie Jutel on the emerging sociology of diagnosis. In spite of the centrality of diagnosis to medical practice and to social science understandings of medicine, it is only very recently that the sociology of diagnosis has finally begun to take shape and garner interest. This was the reason why we decided to organize a series of seminars based on the question of what a diagnosis might mean for patients, medical professionals, developers and users of innovative medical technologies and policymakers alike. We are seeking in this series to provide a forum for interdisciplinary engagement with this central question, focusing in each seminar on a different angle and target audience. Future seminars in the series will focus on theorizing diagnosis, uh, a process and a category which carries significant social, economic, psychological, ethical, and political consequences, on the politics of collective health movements, on practitioner and patient experiences, and on policy engagement in order to illuminate the policy implications of the sociological perspectives explored in the earlier seminars. These uh, questions resonated with work that we're doing here at Exeter in the Health Technology and Society Research Group in our inaugural seminar, which was funded by a grant from the Foundation for the Sociology of Health and Illness, provided a venue in which organizers of this series were able to work out ideas and plans for, for the future seminar series. And I'm particularly grateful to Michael Morrison for preparing a thorough report on that seminar that will be available on the Sociology of Diagnosis website and will be emailed to everyone who has signed on to the news list for this series. I would like to introduce our distinguished speakers and discussants before we begin rather than before each session. Each brings unique and distinct expertise to issues of technological innovation and diagnosis, and we are deeply grateful for their participation in this seminar. The format of the seminar, as you can see from the program, will involve key speaker presentations followed by discussing comments, then opening the floor for general discussion. We will be video recording the speakers and discussants, not the audience, to be available on the seminar series website, and we will also be making curious notes of general discussion for summary input into future seminars and dissemination. So to start with our speakers, Professor Andrew Webster, and I apologize to our speakers if I get things wrong. <laughs> I try. Uh, Professor Andrew Webster is director of the Science, Technology, and Studies Unit, SATSU, at the University of York. 
SATSU is an internationally recognized social science research center exploring the dynamics, practices, and possibilities of contemporary science and technology. Professor Webster's main research interests relate to the sociology of science and technology, and in particular the social dynamics of bioscience, biomedicine, and health informa informatics. Among many other publications, he is the author of one of my favorite books, New Technologies in Healthcare, Challenge, Change, and Innovation, um, and uh, Health Technology and Society, a Sociological Critique. Professor, Doctor, I didn't know you, Professor, Doctor. <laughs> Sally Wyatt is program leader of the eHumanities Group at the Royal Netherlands Academy for Arts and Sciences, professor of digital cultures and development at Maastricht University, and director of the Netherlands Graduate Research School for Science, Technology, and Modern Culture. Her research focuses on digital inequalities and on the everyday uses of web-based technologies by people looking for health information and by scholars engaged in research. Recent books, among many, include Virtual Knowledge, Experimenting in the Humanities and the Social Science. With Andrew Webster, she edits the Health Technology and Society book series for Paul Graves Macmillan. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Sally for the past two years on the research project, which has been a wonderful experience for me. Dr. Katie Featherstone is of the Carter School of Nursing and Midwifery Studies and CSEGEN, like a genus, a member of the ESRC Genomics Network, is an expert in the sociology of biomedical knowledge with particular emphasis on the social consequences of genetic technologies. Her ethnographic work has, has examined specifically the classification of genetic syndromes and other medical entities and the social consequences of such classification, kinship and disclosure in the context of genetic risk information and technologies of health service evaluation and clinical guidelines. Um, Katie has been on my radar since she did her PhD work, and she's someone who can be counted on to ask the most interesting <coughs> questions and make the most interesting analyses from her eth ethnographic work. Her most recent book with Professor Paul Atkinson is Creating Conditions, The Making and Remaking of a Genetic Condition, uh, together with a range of articles on the clinical work involved with the construction of a genetic syndrome, which form an important body of work in the sociology of genetic diagnosis. Dr. Chris Hyde is Professor of Public Health and Clinical Epidemiology at the University of Exeter. has expertise in health technology assessment, particularly in support of NICE, I think we all know NICE, and is a long-standing editor of the NHS Health Technology Assessment Program's monograph series. Um, Dr. Hyde, Professor Hyde had the misfortune of mentioning to me once that he was interested in diagnosis, and I've never forgotten it. <laughs> um, he also has long-standing connections with the UK Cochrane Centre, and has recently been providing support to the uh, UK Cochrane groups on diagnostic test accuracy. He's, I, I mentioned he's been on my radar for some time, and I'm thrilled that he is able to bring his expertise to bear in this seminar. Uh, Dr. Nikki Burton, who is not with us yet, she'll be joining us after lunch, is Professor of Applied Healthcare Research, also at the formerly named Peninsula College of Medicine and Dentistry. University of Exeter. Thank you. Univers now University of Exeter, Exeter Medical School. Uh, Professor Burton is a medical sociologist with particular interest in lay views of prescribed and non-prescribed treatments, patient-doctor communication about prescribing, the management of multiple medic medications and chronic illness, complementary medicine, the synthesis of qualitative research, and user involvement in research. She leads the third GAP group uh, and convenes the qualitative research support group within the medical school and among many other hats uh, related to patient involvement in research. She has unique insight as a medical sociologist into the role of diagnosis from patient perspectives, and she is an honorary fellow of the Royal College of General Practitioners. Our final discussant is Dr. Michael Morrison, my former research fellow, who is now, unfortunately, at um, working at Helix at Exeter. Fortunately for him and for them, not for me. He is a social science scholar with undergraduate training in biology from the University of St. Andrews. Michael's primary research interest and expertise lies in the study of novel and emerging biotechnologies, including the institutional and regulatory cultures of developers and prospective users. His PhD research examined dynamics around the diagnosis and pharmacologic treatment of idiopathic short stature, with particular interest in, in the implications of uh, technology innovation drivers for the construction of diagnostic technologies and practices. He has previously been a researcher on the framework program Southern Regenerative Medicine Project in Europe, Remedy, 
at the University of York with Professor Webster, uh, followed by a research fellowship with me in the Health Technology and Society group, where he co-authored the wonderful report on diagnosis from our inaugural seminar. A final note, I would like to thank, and you're probably happy to hear that, <laughs> Uh, and, and recognize the entire organizing team, and in particular, Dr. Charlotte Salter, Dr. Andrea Stockel, and Professor Sarah Nettleton for their incredible support in getting, well, their initiative in getting the seminar series up, and their incredible support in getting this seminar going, um, and all of the support they have given to Michael and me in the organization of this, our first seminar. And also thanks to Anne-Marie Chattel and Simon Cohen in absentia, and to Chi Wong, our administrator who has had to run back to a genus for her in this indispensable administrative support. Thank you for your attention.